Hi, and welcome to Watch and Work. Watch and Work is a series of service videos from Contitech for automotive mechanics. My name is Stefan Meyer, and in each video I'll show you a different vehicle engine. Let's see which one we're looking at today. Today we are dealing with an engine from a 2013 Ford Focus 3. It's the 92 kilowatt 1 liter EcoBoost engine with the engine code M1DA. For this engine you need our CT1189K1 kit and the following tools. The belt change interval here is 240,000 kilometers or 10 years. What is special about this timing belt is that it's a belt in oil, meaning it runs in an oil bath. It's important to only use approved oils from Ford. There's a special 5W20 long life oil designed for this timing belt. Make sure you follow the oil change interval. Another thing to watch out for with this engine is the long time required for the job of around 6.8 hours, as almost everything needs to be exposed. This is done by removing the undershield, air conditioning compressor and alternator, along with the turbocharger intake hose, exhaust manifold, exhaust pipe, catalytic converter and intake manifold. You'll need quite a few special tools to remove all these parts. We have to set two separate positions when setting TDC at cylinder 1. Firstly, we have a marking on the crankshaft belt pulley that must be set in roughly this position at around 1 o'clock. And secondly, there is a bolt here on the side which first needs to be unscrewed. We then screw in our special tool until it pushes against the crankshaft. The next thing is to remove both camshaft adjusters and replace them with the locking tools. Pay attention to the markings for the intake and exhaust sides. TDC at cylinder 1 has now been set. You next have to remove the starter motor and fit this tool to lock the flywheel. You'll then be able to undo the crankshaft bolt using this torque multiplier. You now remove the two locking tools and the drive shaft before fitting the holding tool for the torque multiplier. There are three attachment points for the tool. You then remove the ceiling ring at the bottom, which will have to be replaced during reassembly, but we'll come back to that later. Now it's time to undo the valve cover and front cover. A total of 20 bolts have to be unscrewed for the front cover. Four of these are M10 bolts, while the remaining 16 are M6. When undoing the M10 bolts, pay particular attention to this bolt here. It is inserted in a slightly deeper recess, making it difficult to see. I've managed to forget it in the past and then wondered why I wasn't able to take the cover off. Now you have to place the two locking tools on the camshafts. Watch out for the flattened faces as you do this. We have three such flat faces here. If you were to fit the tool the wrong way around, or if the camshaft was out of position, there would be a curved face here instead. The belt drive consists of just a tensioner pulley and the belt. To replace the components, slacken the timing belt with the help of the tensioner pulley, remove the timing belt and then fit the new tensioner pulley. While doing this, I recommend you replace the oil pump timing belt too. This timing belt also runs in oil and doesn't have a set change interval. If you just remove the oil sump as well, you'll be able to change the oil pump belt at the same time and avoid any additional repair work later on. 
erspare euch später eine Menge Zeit. When replacing the tensioner pulley, you need to fit it in in a specific position. There is a small lobe here that has to be inserted into this borehole. You can now fit the timing belt, starting at the crankshaft, then moving in a counterclockwise direction before pulling out the cotter pin from the tensioner pulley to tension the belt. The timing belt is now tensioned. You don't have to make any further adjustments as the tensioner pulley works automatically. If the timing belt has been set correctly and the cotter pin has been removed from the tensioner pulley, everything will be set as it should be. Before you reassemble everything, the sealing surfaces of the front cover, the contact surfaces, oil sump and engine have to be cleaned thoroughly. You can then reattach the front cover using an approved adhesive and screw it into place. The bolts for the front cover need to be tightened in four stages. First stage, bolts 1 to 2 by 5 Newton meters, bolts 3 to 6 by 10 Newton meters, bolts 7 to 16 by 5 Newton meters. Second stage, bolts 3 to 6 by 40 Newton meters, then bolts 3 to 4 and bolts 5 to 6 by 70 Newton meters, bolts 1 and 2 by 9 Newton meters, bolts 7 to 16 by 15 Newton meters. Third stage, bolts 3 and 4 by 90 degrees, bolts 5 and 6 by 90 degrees, bolts 1 and 2 by 90 degrees, bolts 7 to 16 by 90 degrees, bolts 17 to 19 by 10 Newton meters, bolt 20 by 10 Newton meters. Fourth stage, bolts 17 to 19 by 10 Newton meters and bolt 20 by 10 Newton meters. You can now fit the new sealing ring for the crankshaft cover plate using this special tool and the crankshaft bolt. Now it's time to fit the crankshaft belt pulley. Use a new bolt for this and tighten it with a torque wrench, first by 25 Newton meters, then later again by 70 Newton meters. Then reattach the torque multiplier. You now tighten the new bolt in six stages, by 60 Newton meters in the first stage, followed by five further stages of a 90 degree turn each time. You can now remove all tools and finish reassembling the engine in reverse order. Don't forget our seal of quality. Place our part replacement sticker in the engine compartment where it's clearly visible so that the customer sees you have installed quality. Oh! <laughs>